by Adam Prozac. And there you see your semifinal competitors, Sam Black on the left, Daniel Duterte there on the right. Daniel Duterte, of course, uh, you know, just didn't really drop much on the way, on his way through this tournament. He has one loss in the last round, uh, mm -hmm. scooping to Steve Rubin. So uh, he's going to be on the play here, and he's going to cast a taxi probe. See, well, a handful of lands, card that says lands, and a punishing fire. So this is kind of what you alluded to mm -hmm. in the uh, open. One thing notable about this hand, uh, the colored mana sword uh, situation is not great. Uh, there's two lands that don't tap for mana, a wasteland, a ghost quarter, and a thespian stage. So he has to ghost quarter his own land if he wants to get uh, a colored mana source. So this is a pretty speculative hand from Sam, but it can be really strong if Daniel just like plays a creature on his <laughs> turn. Sam's just going to be like, okay, Tabernacle, now you have all your creatures have upkeeps. Um, all right, Sam puts, uh, I mean, uh, Daniel puts out his sacrifice, sacrificial Yeah, he has land. decided to sacrifice, and there are no, yeah, there are no stifles to protect from Wasteland. But uh, Daniel is going to get to cast Brainstorm here. So let's start turn one over on turn two. Right. And so this is a really strong play from Sam. Daniel didn't have a play. So Sam's like, oh, I need, my hand needs time to develop. Let's set us both back a turn. I like my odds better if we both draw a card, essentially. So another life from alum. So this uh, puts Sam... And in somewhat of a predicament. I think I might play either Ghost Quarter or Thespian Stage here. So going with Thespian Stage. So, and then the activation on Thespian Stage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not something you can just win on turn two with. Correct. Uh, you, you can make a 20-20 on your second turn with uh, Mox Diamond. So, if you just play uh, two Mox Diamonds. <laughs> and those are your two land up. That's all you got to do. But that being said, it is not the fastest kill in the world, but there's a lot of disruptive elements that go along with it, and it is a pretty quick kill. All right, we see a wasteland now in hand for Daniel. You could also exploration a bunch of extra lands. That'll help. Wow. So Daniel plays Scalding Tarn, just passes the turn back. To Sam. Don't you hate it in your 36 land deck and you just can't draw any more lands? <laughs> <laughs> so All right, well, yes. there's Ghost Quarter. Now, now, your expectation is that Sam will actually Ghost Quarter. Oh, he's going to Ghost Quarter. He's going to Ghost Quarter Daniel, who has no basic lands. Okay, and the players have had access to each other's decks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's pretty clear. Sam, Sam knows that. It's much more useful to actually just strip mine his opponent here yep. than set himself back to find that uh, colored mana source. Mm -hmm. All right, you wasteland me, I'll wasteland you. Maybe. <laughs> I think Daniel wants to keep that in play for a bit because he's actually worried about some of the cards like Tabernacle, Pendrel Veil, Maze of Vith. All cards that are in Sam's hand, uh, including a Dark Depths as well. Right. Oh, he just drew a he Dark just Depths. He just drew a Dark Depths. Well, there's Maze of Ith. Non-mana producing land without the help of Urborg. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of the, the strengths of this deck is that it uses unique cards that from all throughout Magic's history. Like, you know, you have a the Dark card and a Gate Crash card just <laughs> hanging out together. All right. Daniel... Cracks his fetch land. So yeah, if Daniel's looking to get on the board, uh, a simple Delver of Secrets probably isn't going to cut it. All right, it looks like he might have. Oh, well, true he's got a nemesis. true name nemesis. That's a, an incredible card. Yeah, and he will happily pay whatever tabernacle tax is imposed on him yeah, so this puts for the this card. This puts the impetus on Sam to win very quickly, actually. All right, there's tabernacle. Uh, ah, and Daniel reaches Oh yeah, right for the die. Don't forget that one. Now he's got to read the tabernacle here yeah, just to make reading, sure. <laughs> reading a, 
a card from, you know, 1994 is not the easiest thing in the world. So that creature, yep, is destroyed. I mean, he's just yep. checking to make he's sure. He's just double checking that he has to pay. He does. Yeah. Because interestingly, with Tabernacle, for example, if there was a Merit Lage token in play, in which is indestructible, you right. would not have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you, you could pay if you want to. Yeah, it's up to you. But no point. Yeah, Sam doesn't really have any answer to True Name Nemesis. Yeah, the Maze Other, of Myth is, is not useful so here. So the Punishing Grove, uh, Punishing Fire Grove of the Burn Willows combo, no longer an option for Sam. That's too slow against a True Name Nemesis. Sam has to assemble his Dark Depth stage, which is going to be very challenging in the face of a Wasteland. And possibly two Wastelands. I mean, there might be another one in wow, hand. Wow, there it there is. There it is. So, yeah, this is... Daniel's a huge favorite, I think. Now, really when do you, have to when do do you want to pull the trigger on these uh, wastelands? Um, once Thespian stage. Oh, there's Grove of the Burn Willows. Uh, once Thespian stage is uh, targeting Dark Depths. Oh, really? You really want to wait that long? I, I think, yeah. I think you want to destroy both lands. So. You wait for the Thessian stage to become a Dark Depths so that the original Dark Depths legends itself, then you can wasteland. Okay, here was Life from the Loam, and that's going to get spell pierced. And, and so uh, Sam has some potential counterplay. He can, you know, activate his uh, wastelands on. Uh, Daniel's Wastelands uh, to kind of free him up. them up. <laughs> That's, you know, 150% more challenging. Wow. So he right now decides to take away all the mana-producing lands here. That's a fine decision. Uh, if that's speed stage is something, you probably want to, you know, just drop the combo anyway. So here's a Verdant Catacombs. So here's actually a big, uh, big play. Like, I think Sam need, really, really needs an exploration to just kind of, you know, get ahead, get his game going. Uh, he was trying to, you know, play Life of the to try and, like, maybe bait out some counter spells, but now I think he really has to go for it. Uh, exploration is very important to Sam being able to, to get there. Uh, and there it time. is. And Can Daniel, Daniel do anything about it is the question. Looks like... No, I think he has a ponder, but he might have. I know he has a ponder and a young pyromancer, but I don't know what his other cards are. All right, All right and there's so a it's, it's stage. Okay, see so him leaving his mana tapped for the tabernacle payment. So, true name's not the, the quickest clock in the world, but Sam doesn't really have much in the way of. Uh, things to prevent that three damage. He basically only has the card Glacial Chasm, uh, which is, a, you know, keeping with the spirit of things, a, you know, non-mana producing land. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like Sam does have a Dark Depths okay. in his hand here. But uh, he also has to take his access time. to a lot of... Uh, a lot of dark guys. One might say as many as he needs. Yeah, we, we heard from Luis Scott Vargas that there was a game he was playing out on the floor. Very similar setup to what Sam has here where he made five Merit Lage tokens. His opponent just kept plowing them and he oh, just kept life from... Shares. And yeah. he kept casting towards the plow shares and he just kept, kept gaining 20 and he just kept life from the looming the combo back and replaying it in one turn and... Oh, there was a Bajuka Bog. Mm -hmm. And there's the Dark Depths. This is so, uh, not yeah. a good spot for Daniel here. He's got so, Sam down to seven. Right, he has a Lightning Bolt in hand. Maybe. I think one of them is a Young Pyromancer. But yeah, I'm 
Really surprised Daniel hasn't uh, fired off his ponder. He's just looking for something. Yeah, he's thinking he's doing the math right now. Mm -hmm. I think if you, I think the dis, the difference is, can Daniel find another lightning bolt? Because I think Sam is going to be able to make a twenty twenty on his next turn. All right. Well, here's Ponder. Unless Daniel disrupts him in some way, and that can be a, a there's a wide variety of ways. Like a counter spell for a life from the loam. Uh, well. Because Sam needs a wasteland. So if Sam plays a wasteland to and wastes Daniel's wasteland, that forces the action and allows me, Sam and, to make and a then, 20 And then Sam gets to make the 20-20 in response right. to wasteland. Mm -hmm. That is a checklist card, so Dover of Secrets. So now what um, happens if Daniel just wastelands here? Does so that give him an extra turn it to try to pull it together? It because of the life from the loams in Sam's graveyard. If, say, Daniel just wasteland the Dark Depths right now, uh, Sam would just life from the loam, whatever land Sam turned like. So Wasteland's actually not an amazing card against uh, the lands deck. can be very strategically well-placed. But it is not the lights out card that uh, you might think it is. All right, here comes Life from the Loam. Oh, thing I hadn't considered is Sam needs two mana producing lands to uh, get his Thespian Stage to copy the Dark Depths, which he doesn't have if he has to cast a Life from the Loam. Okay. So. Daniel might be able to win with just one lightning bolt. Um, uh, huh. And Daniel is considering firing off this wasteland in response. In response to, to the life from to the, the life from the which is, I guess, selected its targets already. I believe so. Yeah. It's gonna get. So it. Sam's. Getting back two non Dark Depths lands. So Sam would need another Dark Depths naturally in his hand to make a 20 20 this turn. So that's potentially a pretty strong line. All right, there's Grove of the Burn Willows. Daniel, I would like you to gain a life. Yep, uh, he goes up to 16. There's a second copy of Exploration. All right, so two copies of Thespian Stage now, and a Ghost Quarter. Now, if you're Daniel, do you just fire off this bolt here I and would. hope for the best? The, the other thing is, if you don't, you have two red sources. Right, because the Flooded Strand represents a red source. Mm -hmm. So if you draw a Lightning Bolt, you could just fire them both off fairly easily. And I don't see him otherwise choked on mana. What did he draw? Did he f draw Fork Bolt? I believe he did. Is there a Fork Bolt in his deck? Yeah, there's one. Well, that would do it then, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what Daniel's thinking about is a potential... Wow. Wow. So the thing... Daniel would be thinking about is potentially a way to get green mana so that he can crop rotation for Glacial Chasm. But I think if I think if Daniel has both a Lightning Bolt and a Fork Bolt, I think he has to at least fire off the, the Fork Bolt. Okay, well here is Life Alone. Hits a Wasteland in his, two Wastelands actually with mm -hmm. his Dredge. He's going to cast Life from the Loam. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. Yes. So one of the things Sam might be trying to do as well is uh, just destroy all of Daniel's lands so he can't pay for the upkeep on True Name Nemesis. Okay. That's also a, a plan. Usually uh, 
usually easier to just make a 2020. But I think I think Daniel's going to win this game unless Sam has a sneaky. Because Merritt Lange will still have summoning sickness. Right. Uh, Daniel has a burn spell. So here you see three lands being poked at with varying forms of land destruction. Yep. And uh, I would like to lightning bolt you. Yes. Lightning bolt you. Reduce Sam to one. Can Daniel live? Keep his mana through to his next turn. I think he can. Uh, I believe the Thespian stage is a ghost quarter, but I don't think that matters. You can't ghost. Daniel will be able to fetch a land and pay for it before Sam has the opportunity to ghost quarter the, new, the fresh land. Assuming Daniel waits to his upkeep to fetch, which I <laughs> highly suspect. <laughs> you know, wow, this, is, this has been a tense game. Yeah. You know, the, the, just the, night, the three a turn clock of true name nemesis. You know, now the clock's, you know, finally striking, you know, zero in this case for Sam. Sam's trying to figure his way out. Okay, so, so upkeep. Yeah, upkeep. I'm going to go find a land. I'm going to pay for my true name nemesis. Yep. Pay. Okay. And Sam's going to pick him up. Wow. Wow. Now, I'm, I'm curious. Now, why... Unless there's just no more, no more red sources available to him, because he could have also, just on his own turn, if he could have fetched a red source, cast Fork Bolt, cast Lightning Bolt, right. and then you're dead. Mm -hmm. Obviously, worried about Glacial Chasm is, is something mm -hmm. that he has to think about. Th that might have been the case where I mean, I mean I'm looking like at he only it. has two, waste, uh, two red sources, two Volcanic Islands. Yeah, just those two Volcanic Islands, and then uh, Deathrite Shaman is really his other <laughs> mm -hmm. regular source so of that red. That might have so been, yeah. I think he, he was out. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, there you get a look at uh, Sam Black's list. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can just, if you want to see his opening hand, just look for all the non-mana producing lands. And <laughs> you can start to piece it together. What do you think is going to happen here from the sideboard? Uh, Drop of Honey is a card we've seen uh, show up quite a bit. So lands is one of those decks that has uh, kind of a structural integrity that you don't really want to disrupt unless you are somehow fundamentally altering what your deck is doing. So sometimes you might want to take out the Punish Shoot Fire. Sometimes there might be some utility lands that you don't need. Um, but for, for the most part, I wouldn't expect Sam to sideboard very heavily. Um, you could make an argument for some chokes. Yeah. Um, Chalice of the Void is also another card you can make a good argument for. Uh, but I doubt he will bring in too many other things. The drop of honey, maybe, but I don't anticipate that. Okay. Well, let's see what Daniel might do after mm -hmm. his sideboard against uh, this land deck. I have to imagine surgical extraction is at the top of the list. If not, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So surgical extraction just takes the, you know, the kind of the life out of the life from the loam deck. Uh, that's the one you really want to hit. Um, if you can catch them with a life of them, they don't really have their engine going. Um, the other two cards I see uh, featuring primarily are the Diabolic Edicts. Uh, Sam's deck basically only produces one creature. It's a 2020. And so making him sacrifice that is uh, fairly important. Let me, let me ask you a question about Daniel's, just going back to his main deck for a second. Mm -hmm. Is it surprising for you to see a deck especially a deck that's done as well as Daniels has this weekend with cards like Ponder, Lightning Bolt, Taxian Probe, you know, Brainstorm, uh, you know, all these cheap spells and blue mana. I'm not seeing Snapcaster Mage. No Snapcaster Mage. Anywhere in this deck. So How unusual is that for uh, a deck of, of this archetype? Not entirely unusual. So Snapcaster Mage uh, would be the... So Daniel wants to be really low to ground, wants to play with only, you know, one or two lands in play. Uh, wants to use Wastelands the rest of the time. The only cards that cost mana in this deck, uh, more than one mana in this deck, 
our true name nemesis and young pyromancer both of which provide a kind of resilient threat that uh snapcaster mage can't provide I no, like how we ignore the seven mana Gurmag Angler as anything other, one. other than a one mana spell. <laughs> of course. It's converted. Mana cost might be seven. Yes, but it, of course. It, it's a one mana spell. Yeah. Same thing with Force of Will, obviously. If, you know, if you're just looking in the upper right hand corner, mm -hmm. that cost can be deceiving when it comes to magic. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot, a lot of legacy is about paying zero and one mana card for your spells. Uh, so surgical extraction, you mentioned. You mentioned the edict. Cabal therapy, not an exciting card against this not deck. Not terribly. Like a, you know, a lot of the main card you actually want them not to cast is Life from the Loam, and a discard spell doesn't stop them from doing that. All right. So you're expecting basically those four cards to come in. Yeah, I think the young pyromancers are pretty weak because they're both bad against the Tabernacle. Oh and, sure. Uh, <clears throat> and the Punishing Fire. Uh, they they're actually. Pretty good against the card Maze of Ith, but I would still look to side some out. And I'd also probably look to side out some, like the, the Forked Bolt definitely doesn't right. need to be in the deck. Okay. Well, there you see some of the options available to these guys out of sideboard. We'll get a mm -hmm. look soon enough at what they actually did. But uh, do you, uh, in general, how do you find this matchup? What, what's your general... Uh, um, take on this matchup. So one of the main reasons to lands lands players believe that their uh, Delver matchup is one of the main reasons to play lands. Uh, typically, yeah, I would say I would want to be on the land side of things. Uh, I, I just think that their long term life from the loam they don't play the same mana game as. The rest of legacy, they they get to ignore cards like Daze and Spell Pierce and even Force of Will to a large extent. Now, from the Delver side uh, of things, how likely is it that you know? How much do you have to prepare yourself for a deck like Lands? How how much of this do you expect to see in such a wide open field like Legacy? So Lands is not a large percentage of the meta game, but it is such a unique deck that you get you get huge like the first few games you practice against a lands deck provide massive returns on how you should play the matchup. Uh, it's not something like, you know, when I would play Legacy a lot, I'd, I could never find somebody that had a lands deck to play against. You know, only only randomly getting paired to get its uh, magic on was the other. You know, just like so few people play the, you know, lands deck. It's, it's picked up more now, uh, now that players have seen its strength. Yeah. Um, but all right, here we see turn one Mox Diamond from Sam Black. Both players kept their opening hands. I see a gamble. Oh uh, yeah. I see Amonkhet making an appearance. Yeah, discards one of, one of the new cycling dual lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cycling lands are amazing with life from the loam. Yeah, I mean that was that was really when this deck first emerged. It was really like almost like a card draw engine with yeah. multiple cycling lands. Yeah, it's gotten to be a much leaner killing machine. All right, here, here we see Sam is just getting things right off mm -hmm. to uh, a big start here with life from the loam just for one land back. But what he really wants to do is just start dredging. Yep. Uh, unfortunately for Sam, I think his life from the loams are about to get surgically extracted. Oh, really? Just right away, huh? Yep. Oh, no. There it is. And you see Gamble. Is that a Ghost Quarter? Ghost I Quarter believe. and Thespian Stage. Mm hmm. And one life from the loam down, two life from the loam down. This is where you hope your opponent misclicks on Magic Online and leaves you one. Oh, I've I've <laughs> misclicked my fair share, yeah. Especially on a card like Life Loom, I'll just like left the card in the graveyard and it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Forgot I needed to click on that one. And so there it goes. So now So Sam did bring in the drop of honey, it's right there. Oh okay. Right in the front, yeah. Wasn't sure if he'd bring it in or not. And then you see uh, Daniel wasn't having any trouble finding those. He was just making yeah, sure yeah. he knew what was in store he for him the rest of this game. Yeah, he wants to see how Sam sideboarded 
Um, I think I have some. Let's see, if I'm Sam, definitely can't make a 2020 next turn. Probably could in two turns. So if I'm Daniel, that means I'm going to try and uh, play, out, play out a few cards. I might play a Ponder, might play Delver of Secrets, Deathrite Shaman, any of that stuff. But yeah, Sam's in. Did Sam just natural draw the combo? Did he just draw Dark Depths? Um, hard to tell. Yep, looks like it. Wow. So that's helpful. He had a gamble to yeah. go find a missing piece. Uh, but I think the hard part for him is going to be uh, Daniel's Wasteland. Oh wow. I think that's. I think there's a big misstep from yeah. Daniel unless he has. Daniel's the one with the gamble here. Yeah. And uh, Sam is going to cycle. Sam's going to be able to play a Dark Depths, activate Thespian Stage, and just make a 2020, and Daniel won't have a response. Whereas if you played Wasteland. You know, oh. Sam is going in a different direction here. Yeah, I. He's playing the tireless tracker that he brought in out of his sideboard. Mm hmm. Yeah, and Sam Seed, I would have just gone for it. <laughs> and what's the what's the risk of going for it at that point? Well, so you, you lose two of your lands, and you kind of lose your ability to play this tireless track. You lose that stuff. So Sam as would actually be giving up quite a bit uh, to play to play Dark Jabs. All right. Well, Daniel thought enough of that tireless tracker to uh, force of will it. He's going to, again, yeah. has a three-power creature in play. And if I'm Daniel, I would actually have used my Scalding Tarn right there. Oh, you don't want that Lightning Bolt? I don't want that Lightning Bolt. All right, he's going to Ponder. Maybe that's why he wanted to keep his Scalding Tarn, mm -hmm. knowing he had the Ponder and could take the best card and then shuffle away the other two. Yeah, and so the other thing is, you know, looking at it is that there's not a ton of fetchable lands to get. If Sam can wasteland six times, Daniel's out of lands. Now we see a young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. But Sa Daniel continues to not play that uh, wasteland. Not, yeah, that's... And now here's an exploration for Sam. So not playing the wasteland into Ghost Quarter makes some amount of sense. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. The Ghost Quarter is certainly an issue. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see where Daniel tries to pick his spot. But you could just play the Wasteland and hit the Thespian stage. I don't know. Yep. Just keep him. Now he's got to deal with the 2020. Yep, here comes 2020s. So Dark Depths is on the table. He's going to play a gamble. I wonder what Sam wants to gamble for here. Could what would you gamble for here? So <clears throat> the things I'm thinking about here are how do I assemble another one of my combos? Uh, that so you start thinking about Punishing Fire. Punishing Fire, Grove of the Breno. So my answer is I wouldn't have gambled here. Um, but I think Sam is looking for some sort of you know, long term, what happens if my 2020 doesn't work out thing? So I saw him, uh, Sam sighted in his Molten Vortex as well. Oh, very nice. That's right, a Stormbind like card. Mm hmm. Let's you discard lands to damage the people. So exploration is not what Sam gambled for. Okay. So we're going to find out what that is when we get a look at his hand. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm Sam, I probably make the 2020 on his upkeep it was very yeah so now he can't make the 2020 this turn oh and maybe and that's po also possibly why di what happens with okay in comes the insectile aberration we'll let this play out and see how it works if Sam uses the ghost quarter here so if Sam uses the ghost quarter on Daniel's Wasteland. Daniel can Wasteland the Dark Depths. And th uh, Sam doesn't have two extra mana to use his Thespian Stage. That is the... 
kind of the, the drawback to spending a mana on Gamble. All right. Sectile Liberation has a long way to go. Got to start somewhere. It's got to get four more attacks in here before that Lightning Bolt can close it out. Well, the Death Rite Shaman might be able to speed oh, it up sure. a little bit, but I, I think we got quite a ways to go for... And keep in mind that an Insectile Aberration can also buy a turn. Yep, absolutely. I think that might end up being really important this game. Right, they are allowed to block. Oh, we got a Chalice of the Void, I bet. Oh, very interesting. It's a good card to gamble for against this deck, but don't think... Yeah, if, if so is he Chalice on two because he's worried about Diabolic Edict? I was thinking about that, but he can't because if he chouses on two, then he just gets his land waste landed. So he'd have to find another backup copy of whatever gets waste landed. So he needs all of his mana. Fascinating. All right. I think he's just, yeah, kind of realizing that it's like, eh, hey, this gamble thing didn't work out. So there's another copy of Wasteland for oh. Daniel, and that's huge. Because now he can force the action. <laughs> right. Well, he doesn't even have to, but Sam can no longer make a 20-20. Wow. Wow, this is crazy. Now, do you feel like Daniel has played against this lands deck before? <laughs> I think so. All right, so here is... Ghost Quarter. What is Sam going to target? I wouldn't be surprised if Sam's like, oh, I have to target Underground Sea. Because Ghost Quartering here would have not make sense otherwise. Unless there's a crop rotation. He's like, okay. I will Wasteland your Dark Depths in response. He crop rotated Wasteland. I mean, uh, used his... Ghost Quarter on the Wasteland. Mm -hmm. He's got two gambles in hand now? He does. But I don't think he has the time for him. All right. Here we go. Pick up those dice. We're gambling. Yeah, so... Something like Tabernacle doesn't do it. Like Glacial Chasms. It'll buy you turns, but that's not a winning line. I mean, Tabernacle's kind of interesting here. Tab Tabernacle could could do some work here. Right, it really makes it almost impossible for Daniel to... Right, it, it forces a Wasteland, I think. Oh, sure, sure, he can just Wasteland. So He'll just Wasteland the Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's that's progress. Right, and then you still have another gamble to go get the other combo piece. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think he has the mana to activate that's being staged. Ugh. And gamble twice. <laughs> Sam massaging the scalp. Sam's like, how do I get out of this? He's made his decision. The gambles become increasingly more risky as the game goes on. And yeah, you have don't fewer have and fewer cards. cards in yes, hand. yes. Okay, see, so we're just going over it. Exploration again. What did he get? Looks like Mazeveth. Okay. So just wanting to hold off that three points of damage a turn for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe buy himself enough turns for that second copy of Gamble to get him what he needs. Makes sense. <laughs> so <the laughs> he's thinking about gambling first, though. Because he's like, well, I might want to discard this Mesa myth right. to gamble yeah. that. <laughs> Wow. 
Oh, what an interesting game. Oh, oh wow. he extends the hand. He's like, you have a lightning bolt, right? And he's like, yeah, I do. Daniel Duterte through to mm. the finals here at Grand Prix yeah, Seattle. Nice. Congratulations Just to Daniel. playing the Wasteland game. Yep. Uh, against the Lands deck, you know, not a not a long term solution, but really also had to play the surgical. Extraction I was just going to say game. that surgical extraction <laughs> you talked about in the pre in the pre to that game was was absolutely critical. Just right. Gets that turn one life from Loam from Sam, the perfect setup for his deck. Right. Wasteland. Once you surgical life from the without life from the Loam, Wasteland becomes incredible uh, against this Lands deck. It's like life from the Loam is what gets the engine going and what kind of makes it immune to a lot of the kind of the reactions that you one might make to a lands deck. Yeah, no, great job by Daniel. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, getting some, some emails coming in on the phone from people at home, pretty excited mm -hmm. uh, for him. Oh, look, a new match. Oh, there we go. Keaton Wood playing Miracles uh, up against Jeremy Dizani with the Sultai control deck. Both players have won a game. Uh, Keaton uh, looks to have the man advantage and the uh, old black bordered counterspell advantage here. I really appreciate Keaton's choice of magic cards here. <laughs> you know, I think the either either beta or alpha islands. All right, there is a hem to Torak. And it's a brainstorm's great here. You're either yep. gonna find something Just card your <laughs> It turns him to Turok into a mind rot. Yeah. <laughs> you basically get to choose what you'll be discarding. Not not a quite choice, not a full choice because Keaton has more than four cards in hand, but he's going to discard some. Of, oh, he does. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's Jace. A key to this Miracles deck. Snapcaster Mage is going to get Force of Will. Oh, wow. So Keaton has all the, uh, he has the lens advantage, but Jeremy's the one with cards in hand. Yeah, he has all the cards in hand here. Probably the ones he couldn't cast. Including a Snapcaster Mage, a Leovold. Looks like two Abrupt Decay. Yeah. So what is, are we just waiting for Jeremy to decide what blue card he's pitching? Correct. Wow. <laughs> All right, so brainstorm for Jeremy. The, oh, and finds finds pretty much whatever he needs here. Well, he's got another he, land. He's got a battle. Okay, Strix. there's a there's a fetch land, I believe. He's gonna let to. him start climbing his way out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeremy, firmly with the advantage here. Now that once he's gotten over his uh, mana issues. So yeah, he's going to play the Strix, yeah. And so, yeah, Keaton knew what that card was. Mm -hmm. wonder what it would be. So it's, it's definitely one of his better cards because he discarded he it. He protected it, yeah. He protected it with, from him to Turok. It's not a Jace. It's not a back to basics or anything like that. Yeah, I wonder if Jeremy saw Back to Basics in one of the other games. You see that? Well, they they both know each other. Oh, they deck know the deck list. Yeah. That's of course, of course. So, I'm sure these abrupt decays are very important for uh, Jeremy to keep off the table. Well, he does have a few basic lands. It's actually has 100% of the basic lands in his deck <laughs> on the battlefield right now. So, just one island, one swamp. It's not like modern where you have a lot of incentive to play a lot of basic lands with. Cards like Path to Exile and Field of Ruin. Like you see, there's, you know, basically like Ghost Quarter, Wasteland protects you a little bit. But playing zero basic of a zero basics in your whole deck, it's a pretty defensible decision. Yeah. One that I'm sure Keaton has taken advantage of many times this oh, tournament. Oh, yeah. All right, so here we see a Snapcaster Mage come down at the end of Keaton's turn. He's just brainstormed and played a fetch land, so he's going to get to see some fresh cards next turn. But, uh, you know, Jeremy wants a little bit of that action himself. Uh, Jeremy's like, I would like some of these sweet magic cards in my hand. You're going to get to put two Abrupt Decays back down on top. Maybe one. and Taking a peek through 
the graveyard. Mm -hmm. I think Jeremy should be careful to. Uh, Jeremy's always very careful. Oh, he's he's very careful and methodical, <laughs> but he should be careful in his actions to not expose himself to back to basics. I think that's one of the primary ways he loses this game, is to not keep at least a green source available to him. So that he can uh, cast Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay. So he has a swamp, but he definitely needs a green source available. So I would be very shocked if Jeremy cast his uh, Leovold. Okay. Now he's going to Thought Seize and see what's going on here. I wonder what is going on. The Pyroblast is going on. And I wonder, was that the card he protected? Mm-hmm. Okay. Something we've talked about as a clean answer to Leovold. And we may see a Leovold here now. Mm -hmm. Now he may risk the one turn right, the window. window of and even back then, to basics. He, so uh, if if Keaton does draw back to basics, he's still got to deal with the six power on board as well. No back to basics, no answers to creatures. Looks no like Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, it looks like Jeremy's in the driver's seat. Well, Jace the Mind Sculptor isn't actually that strong against Leovold. Oh, true. Like, I might... Fate seal, you draw a card. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> that's one of the better modes. <laughs> I can assure oh, you yeah, it's better yeah, than brainstorming. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, there is Jace well, speaking for of Jeremy. Jace. And he is... He's just Jeremy gonna, would like to brainstorm. Yeah, he's going to just, I think... Always a temptation to... Your opponent's in a in a bad spot. Spot to to fate seal, but you know this is fetch land, and if this board gets answered, Jeremy's. Yep, there we go. Doesn't have much. Jace goes upstairs. There, you can keep it. It's the best card in your deck. Shuffle it away. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the best card in Keaton's deck. Probably. Uh, does he have entreat how, the angels? How in sick his would deck? it be if it was an entreat the angels? Um. Not possible. Oh, okay. We cannot. Keaton does not have. That's not a miracle available to him? Not a miracle available. Is this really a miracle deck then? It's got Terminus in it. <laughs> it's a minor miracle. It's yeah, called minor it, miracles. Yeah, minor miracles. I like it. That's a good, good name. Uh oh, this Pyroblast. All right, Pyroblast. I would like to draw a card. Yeah, you targeted my. Evolved. My creature. And now I can play my Jace. Okay, there's Jace. And now here's the thing. You have a Jace. You're facing three power of attackers. You what have do you to do tick up here, right? I think you have to tick up. I might tick up targeting myself because I'm so desperate. And then you can play the Jace Fate Seal mind games. <laughs> you leave it on top and then Jeremy it's <laughs> But yeah, Keaton should get to. Uh, so the question, so we get this straight though. Jeremy left the Pyroblast on top when he fate sealed. Mm -hmm. So he was playing the mind game. Yeah. And uh, Keaton's like, okay, Keaton's I'll like, draw. Okay, I'll draw it. Yeah. Nice. Good for you, Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I I missed that. That one was really cool. I mean, unless Jeremy just wanted to draw a card. All right, so Jace ticks down to two. Another Balfour Strix. What can Keaton draw here that will get him out of this? Terminus for one. Also has to find a way to deal with Jeremy's Jace. Yeah, I was just going to say, he's uh, behind uh, in the Jace race. I think that involves some pyroblasting. Now, he's decided it's time to... Oops, dig for some cards. Does have a Snapcaster Mage. That counts as a Pyroblast, I think. Yeah. Although, if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy, one of Jeremy's interaction is Flusterstorm. He does have a Flusterstorm. So, I think... Land, no, if he plays a land, if Keaton plays a land, he can pay for Flusterstorm. Not anymore. <laughs> 
All right, so Ponder looks three deeper. I think he likes what he sees. What did you What did you see? I he in, uh, I think he likes the second card. Okay, so oh. he decided to shuffle. I believe the second card was uh, was a terminus. Oh, you thought he was going to leave that there b mm -hmm. by a turn. Oh. So he's going to Snapcaster right now. Targeting Pyroblast on the Jace. Mm -hmm. But that is going to get Fluster Stormed to death. And now Abrupt Decay is going to take down the, the, the Snapcaster Mage. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy is going to be able to attack Keaton down to three. Well, I think Jeremy's going to kill the Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. Uh, last, last turn he attacked it, had a 2 2 clock, decided not to take that in order to lower Jace's loyalty. So we got Lilian with the Last Hope, Deathrite Shaman. And Abrupt Decay in hand. Mm -hmm. Just sends everything yeah, at he, the Jace. Doesn't want to take any his, chances. Yeah, he's taking his good old time. This is as reckless and. Uh, Hell melods we've seen Jeremy play. <laughs> okay, he's going to crack the Verdant Catacombs. So, Jeremy now gets to play Lily on a Last Hope, which Keaton basically has no answers to in his whole deck. It's one console's judgment. Which he, <laughs> right, he also doesn't have a second white. Right, for the council's so, judgment yeah. at this point. So there's Liliana, the last hope. That's going to go down to down. one. Yeah. I think he wants to pick up a Snapcaster Mage here. Or Leovold. Or Leovold, yeah. Nice call. Puts the Leovold down. Here comes lethal damage. Yeah, he's like... Do you have an answer? Uh, that's not going to work. Oh, no. No. So you get to look, but don't draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keaton actually <laughs> looked four cards, like, kind of oh, deliberately. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you got me. It's All right. Well, yeah, great Jeremy job this takes that two to one. Yeah, great job this weekend, Keaton. to the final. Great job this weekend. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Jeremy Dizani with this, uh, you know, Leovold control deck. He's going to be playing against Daniel Duterte with the Grixis mm -hmm. Delver deck. Who do you like in that matchup? Real quick. Well, it's a tough one. Uh, Jeremy's been playing great, but so has Daniel. I'd give it to Daniel slightly. All right. New York and Seattle are happy to hear that. <laughs> uh, for Adam Prozac, this is Brian David Marshall. We're done for the day, but we've got Marshall, Sutcliffe, and Reed Duke coming up right after this with the finals from Grand Prix Seattle.